Okay, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make this guy. Nice little fold over taco style knife sheath. These are great, they sell like crazy. The problem with knife sheaths in general actually is that there are so many different kinds of knives. So, almost every knife sheath is a custom job. One of these takes me about 20 minutes to make if I'm not you know, taking video and doing all this stuff. So let's jump into it. First, we're gonna go through and do our patterning. I like to do this on heavy craft paper. It's what works best for me. Um, if you wanna do it on plain paper or manila folders or vellum or whatever you want, cool. You're going to need the knife. And this is for a fixed blade knife sheath. This is not for a folding knife sheath. So this is for a fixed blade knife. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my writing implement, whatever I choose to use, and holding it as close to straight up and down as you can, trace that blade out. You might have to switch your hands, and if it gets off a little bit, don't worry about it, just try to keep it close. So I've got that down. I go a little bit off center so that I can do my fold over, personal preference. So from here, you're gonna take your grid ruler. Grid rulers are a must have for leather work. And I'm gonna come from the spine, three eighths of an inch and really work this line in here. This line will make it easy to fold this over. Now I know you're probably thinking that back's curved. Do I need to go and follow that curve? No, just go on the straight. Then from here, I'm gonna come to a half an inch and I'm gonna find about the median of that drop point and do that. Then all the way around the blade, I'm gonna do a half inch but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move it every now and then. So I'm kind of wrapping that edge. And you wanna do this every about half inch step. It makes it easier to find the median and uh, makes the curve nice and smooth. So just like that. Now what I'm gonna do is take my circle guide and I'm gonna come in with my big circles and find one that fits that curve pretty well. And there we go, we've got our bottom line. From here, I like to just really quickly scribe where I want that top of that sheath to be. You want it to be above the bolsters, and if you don't know what bolsters are, this metal piece is a bolster. Um, if you can get it above that for the opening, that's the best practice, because you don't want your bolsters getting all messed up, and you don't want it sitting against a ledge. It holds it better, it's much more secure, and it stops debris from getting into the sheath. So if I want mine, say, right about here. I'm gonna come in here, use my circles. I love my circles, you should love your circles because they help. Uh, if you wanna use like nickels and dimes and quarters and all that, that's cool, do it. I just like these cheap little circle guides. So I've got that one done, now I'm gonna come from my center line, about, I'll uh, call it three eighths of an inch. Inscribe a line vertical. And then from that line, I'm gonna come over a full inch and a half. Inscribe another vertical line, just like that. Then back to our circles. We're gonna go through and right here, we're gonna use our one inch circle. Um, no, we're gonna find the circle that fits. 
So that's about 13 sixteenths. And it's gonna come in right there. Over here, same thing. We're just smoothing these lines out, taking any harsh points off. From here, come into the top, identify where you want your belt to ride. Uh, generally, people like it to where a little bit is above the belt line. This puts it in a really comfortable position to grab. So I'm gonna just come here. And then from this line, come up two inches. And mark across it. Again, with our circles, we'll come in and bound this or clip these. Just like that. And I'm going to perfunctorily put two marks there. I'm not actually going to punch those out yet. Uh, they're just a mark for me to reference that something's going to go there. From here, what I like to do is actually take a drive punch and center it right about there. Knock it out. This will allow it to wrap around the welt we put in and keep its shape pretty easy. And we're going to just cut this out. Do not cut this line right now. You gotta wait on this. Okay, so once you've freed that, also don't cut this line, that's your fold line. You're gonna fold it. And trace this all the way down. Once you've got that traced down to where it looks like this, you can go ahead and free the top. And cut it out. Okay. Now, we're not done with paper yet. You do need to come in here. And you're going to just come around this guy. Just like that. And I'm going to take and mark this and then come in about an eighth of an inch. <clears throat> now, let's clean this up to make it easier to work with. I'm going to come in and cut that out. What we're doing is we're designing our welt to fit perfectly. That way you're not like having to fit two different pieces together because you'll either get a gap right here or a gap up here and I don't like gaps. I'm gonna take a pair of wing dividers, set them to just a hair under half an inch and come in and just mark this just like that. And there's our welt. And if you go through and take your knife, it should fit in there really nicely, just like that. I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna pop a hole on each side. Then I'm gonna, again, just look, eyeball it, see what's gonna work. Think that's going to work for me. Put those, knock these holes in. 
And last but not least on your pattern, you need to remember that you're going to be putting a thumb brake on. If, you're, <clears throat> if you want to, you don't have to. I prefer to do it because it's safer. And to do this, I'm just gonna take a three quarter inch oblong. I'm gonna fold this over so I'm not like below that. There we go, just like that. Um, if you're gonna reuse this pattern over and over and over again, say you're a knife maker and you make one general style of knife and it's always the same, go ahead and just write on here, right hand up. Just like that, so you have a quick reference every single time. For our leather, for a knife this size, I like a seven to nine ounce. Um, you can go a little bit thicker to up to a 10 or a little thinner down to a seven or a six, but I would not stray too far from that. I'm gonna just put this down right here, making right-handed, so right hand up. And I'm gonna just trace it down. I like using pins, not only for video, but in general because it makes it easier to see, and you're gonna finish these edges anyways, or cover the holes with a rivet so that ink will never show. For this, if your oblong slots got off a little bit, just do what I'm doing now and flip the pattern over, that way they're the same length from, or same distance from the edge. And then for your welt, your welt can be cut from anywhere on the leather, and it doesn't matter which way you cut it. So I generally try to find a nasty area that's got like a lot of scarification on it. That way I'm not wasting any good leather on a welt. I like these snap blade knives for just general building. You don't need a super amazing brand new handmade head knife. Just use a snap blade. So. Break the pattern and then break the welt off. The goal is to be working with the smallest piece of leather you can. It makes it much easier. Okay, so we've got it all cut out right now. At this point, you're gonna do any tooling, dyeing that you want to, don't finish it at all. Don't put any kind of acrylics on here. And by acrylics, I mean acrylic finishes. Um, but do do any of your dyeing tooling that you're going to. So I'm not gonna dye and finish this one because I'm just doing this one to show you how to do it. Next step, once it's dyed and tooled and everything, you're gonna take your edge beveler, bevel, all around this strap. Then flip it over and you wanna start in at like right here and stop like right here when you bevel the backside. And the reason is you want that welt to sit on there and you don't wanna gap between the welt the face and the back. Now we're gonna finish this edge. And to do this, I like to use a die pin. It's a nice, clean, easy way to do your edges. So just like that. The cool thing with using a die pin is it's pretty much cases your edge as you use it. So you just come in and rub it slick. 
You can also use token oil and gum trag and stuff like that. But really these knife sheaths are a quick, easy project. So don't spend too much time on them. Okay. So that guy's in there. We're gonna go ahead and cut this welt out. And your welt doesn't need to be like perfectly, amazingly cut out because we're gonna set it off center just a hair so that we have something to sand and grind down. That way we get a nice flush edge. Okay, got my welt cut. Now, I'm gonna take this piece and my straight edge, and I'm gonna cut a three quarter inch strap out of it. It doesn't need to be very long. So it works to cut these out of scrap. Okay, we've got that. And I'm gonna come in and just go ahead and finish these straight edges while I have it. Got that done. From here, I'm gonna take a corner punch because they're really easy. Just knock that off. Once I've got that done, I'll take and rub this edge down real quick. Then I'll feed through just like this. And it can be easier to feed it with a uh, pointed end like I've got here. And every now and then these are tough enough that you really do need to grab a pair of pliers or cut the tip a lot sharper so you can get a handle on them. You want about two inches hanging out. Then I'm gonna come in here. Quick hole. Okay, so now on this side, we're gonna put our line 20 and set it in place. And then just leave this alone for now. It's just that it's easier to get it in right now before it's riveted together than it is when it's all been riveted. Then once that's in, we're gonna glue our well tin. Now, when you're using contact cement, do not like glop it on. You don't want a whole bunch sitting there. But at the same time, don't be so sparing with it and trying to get it only into the one tiny little place, especially on something like this, where it's gonna have a welt to hold it separate. If the contact cement extends past the welt a little bit, it's not gonna hurt anything. So we'll let that dry until it's tacky. While that's drying, I'll clean up a little bit. All right, so this is dried till it's tacky. Starting at the tip, the point, you want to press it in and you want it to like overhang the edge on the face just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. You wanna be able to grind the 
welt off and grind the back plate before you ever start grinding on the face. So it should look like that. And while that's setting up, we'll go ahead and set our rivets for the strap. I'm going to fold this guy down. From the inside to the outside. And whatever rivets you use, uh, cool. I would stay away from tubular rivets for this because if you set them on the inside, they're going to scratch the knife up. And if you set them on the outside, they're going to scratch the user up. When you set these rivets, you want the inside, what's going to be touching the knife to be as flat as possible. So if you've got a traditional rivet setting anvil, turn it over to where the flat is on the back and it'll keep them flat. So now we're going to come in, glue on the back. And you want to get some glue in right there too. That's so the leather doesn't separate from the gusset or from the welt. If you get stuff like that on the inside, just wipe it real quick. It's fine. It's not going to hurt a knife. It's not going to stick everything together. It's not a problem, so don't worry about it. Let this glue dry till it's tacky. Okay, so this is dry till it's tacky. You're going to want to keep a bucket of paper clips if you do knife sheets. Um, they really help. We're going to come in here and start bending this. And you want to start again at the tip. And again, you want it to overlap the layer in front of it by just a bit. And we're going to take our paper clips. And we're going to clip it just like that. Let it sit for about 10 minutes and then stitch it. Now I'm going to stitch this on a sewing machine and I'm not moving the camera to the sewing machine. So I'll be right back after it's stitched. Okay. So I've got it all stitched up. I cut my stitches. It's time to trim this edge. When you trim these edges, try not to take anything off the face ever. Because I've seen ones where it's been a nice straight stitch line and then they go and start trimming and they start taking stuff off the face and all of a sudden that stitch line that was nice and straight is going all like this across the edge. And then right up here, you're just going to carry that cut. So from here, again, I'm going to a machine. I'm going to go grind this edge flat. Trim it before you start grinding. Otherwise, you will heat up the leather and it'll start burning. All right, so now I've got this all ground down and sanded nice and flat. We can see the different layers right in between everything. If you see a wavy line, like uh, I don't really have any, but like this area, but more exaggerated, that means that that leather's folded over. And when you go to burnish it, it's going to puff back up. So you need to sand a little bit more there. We're going to take and bevel this. My rule for beveling is it should never cut all the way through one piece. So if you've got a beveler and it's going all the way through the top layer of leather, you need to move down a size. Okay, so just like that. 
Then we're gonna take our handy dandy dye pen because they're awesome. We're gonna black this edge. And then like right up here, just freehand that in to cover all of the flesh. Just like that. Then we'll take our slick and stick or a burnisher, burnish this down. On these big edges, it's better to just use the stick and go back and forth. This will give you the best finished edge unless you have a custom one made with a huge circle you know, huge cutout. Okay. Last step in this whole process is to take the knife and push it into the sheath. It's gonna be nice and stiff. Then we're gonna take this guy and pull this strap through until we've got it's sized for the male side to land flat on the handle. If you don't size it to land flat like that, it can be really difficult to undo the sheath. Then we'll press it in, just like so, to where we get that mark right there. Punch a hole. Then we take the cap of our line 20 snap and we'll set it. Now, if you're using thicker leather, the post of your snap might not go all the way through. If that's the case, don't worry about it. Just take a French edge beveler and do this. I'm just thinning the leather right there where that snap's gonna go. So that, yep, we've got that in. There we go. Last but not least, let's chop this guy off. And I like to give enough material right there that the wearer's thumb can kind of catch it and pop it off. Just like so. Then we'll press that knife all the way down in there. Close her up and she's ready to go. You can form these if you want to. I generally don't even bother because over time it's going to form to the knife pretty well. And that's how you make a knife sheath.